the you know the gnome brings luck but having a gnome inside of your car, the thing that I've told people, it, it manifests felonies. It's kind of like our, our, our it's our white girl crystal. All right. <laughs> the gnome is our white girl crystal. All right. Um, we are manifesting felonies uh, when we bring the gnome out with us. All right. Well, let's All go right. then, man. All right. So Sorry. you started the meme page and um, and you were demoted from detective. Is that what you said? Yeah, to detective back to patrol. Just because you made a meme about your chief? Correct. This was before the page had even existed. I uh, decided to be a funny guy, and I ended up making a meme about our uh, chief. Um, he, it went around the department. They passed it around. I passed it to, like, maybe seven people sent it, and it just grew like wire, wildflower. And after that, it was just... Uh, yeah, it was a wrap. I got pulled in, got talked to, got told, you know, did you make this? Of course, I didn't lie. I was like, of course, I took credit for, you know, that monstrosity of a meme that I made. <laughs> that <And> masterpiece. <laughs> it was a masterpiece for sure. It still gets talked to about to this day. And uh, he was like, you could get sent back to patrol for this. And my response to that was patrol is not a punishment. And uh, they kicked me out of the fucking meeting after that. So then I made it a mission to actually make memes um and then i started the page that's it's crazy because you're also really good at um a lot of the i don't know what you call it like digital art and i'm sure you'll be the first one to say like no i'm not that good but i think out of all the meme pages you are like a, the most sophisticated as far as like graphics and stuff like that yeah um yeah, I feel like I, I kind of treat the page, man, a little bit like a business and a hobby. So I, I care about that kind of stuff. Like, I, I want the image of the page to look a little bit different than these random pages that just kind of repost memes, you know, and grab memes from other pages and kind of do the same thing. Because, you know, I I tend to only post, I mean, I only post original content on my page. Um, and then on my stories is where you'll kind of see, like, people getting shared, like, their stuff or random videos that, that I didn't make. Um, but as far as the art goes, I pay artists to kind of make me what I want, um, just to kind of either sell merch or just to make art for people to look at. When, um, when people, I, I don't have a meme page. I like making memes, but I, um, I think that like the one thing I don't do is meme page is, uh, yeah. the, uh, when people collaborate, is that so a smaller page or, or is that so a bigger page can help out a smaller page to get more followers? Yeah, so it's a it's a mixture of two things. Or you take two bigger pages, um, and when you collaborate, it shows it to both of your followers. Mm -hmm. So you have a following that I probably don't have because people are interested in maybe not like humor. They want to hear, you know, some some people talk and stuff like that while they're cruising around. But if we wanted to kind of mesh both of our worlds together, I would collaborate with you, even if it was like a merch thing, right? Like if me yeah. and you made a T-shirt together. Um, and we shared the point, uh, the, the, the pages by collaborating, your followers will see what I posted. Yeah. We need to do that. And we, talk, we talked about that a while back. So. Yeah, we did. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely interested. I feel like the, the whole name of your podcast kind of goes with the gnome, the whole anti-hero thing. What, what, tell me the origins of the gnome and the, uh, street gods. Because I, I love them, both, right. but there's got to be some kind of origin story. Yeah, so let me, uh, as far as the, the name, all right, we'll start with the name of the whole street, Prophet Gnome. Um, when I was trying to figure out a name for the meme page, um, I was trying to do something that nobody else had done. Um, and I wanted it to kind of like, there was no other way you could find my page other than by writing out my name specifically. Um, and I thought of a clever way to call cops, like another name for it, you know, and everyone and their mother, it's, you know, something police memes, something cop memes, whatever, yeah. some type of tent code. Um, and I didn't want that. So street profit, it kind of just spoke to me and I was like, that's, you know, we could kind of be like street profits, like out there, you know, the police out there out in the streets. So I was like, I went with that. Then I needed a mascot. Um, I feel like everyone and their mother just wants to be super tactical with stuff and, you know, it, something always just has to be decked out and tacked out with quads and SWAT. And I was like, no, I need to take something cute and just kind of make it like evil um, and just, you know, dark humor. And so I chose a gnome because, you know, 
the gnome is like this innocent little creature. Um, so I decided to choose the gnome. Um, and it also brings luck. I don't know if you know that, but gnomes bring, uh, are known to bring luck. And I was like, well, what better person to need luck than cops? So that's how the name just kind of started with that. Wow. And street guys. I love that. I love that. I don't know the origin about that, but when you meet like new cops that are out there just getting it right. And you yeah. know, they, and you look back and you look at your buddy, you know, you've been there for a while and you go, he's a street God, man. And you laugh because yeah. you, you don't want to stop him from doing good work. But when all no. that good proactive, when you're new, you do feel like a fucking street God. You're like, Oh yeah. man, dope bus after dope bus. Yeah. And it, that, that name, man, um, that name, it, it was a collaboration of course, between me, peach hood and bigs. Um, we kind of hang out. we, we're kind of like what you would call, I guess, the founders of of that. And when it comes to the merch and stuff, and we sat around and just kind of talked about it. And that's the name that we ultimately uh, came together. Because, you know, if you did Street Lords or something, you sound like a damn gang member or Street Kings. You're a gang member again. So we had to thread lightly there and kind of choose. And Street Gods just kind of spoke to us. And I was like, what better and more cocky way to kind of call each other just Street Gods? I was like, <laughs> we're going to piss you off. And that's what we went with. You so you well okay so I won't talk about where you at geographically, um, but you physically like you know those two meme pages too, like physically. The other three meme pages, yes, we know oh, okay. each other. Whoa, yeah, all that's, day. that's dope. It's man. big big twelves, uh, peach the fuzz twelve, and then you got hood cop hood cop memes, um, and it's all four of us. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, I remember one time when I started my apparel company, this is like two years ago, uh, I used to make wild ass promotional videos that my chain of command saw and about lost her shit. <laughs> but, of course. Uh, but Biggs, I remember, he, I want, he has a big following, right? If I remember correctly. Well, Biggs, and Biggs is kind of coming up. The one that has the that had the biggest following was Hood and Peach. Those are the two oh, that right. had like a following. Biggs is coming up right now. I think he's about to hit 5K pretty soon. Okay. So. Yeah, somebody shared my shit and it was like, I was like, oh my God, like meme page shared my shit. But, um, okay. Yeah. So you are essentially, you know, a lot of people don't know this about me. So I have to like remind them that when I yeah. talk shit and everything, I am an actual street cop. Like, and from what it sounds like, you are also a street cop. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I became a detective for a whole six and a half months and uh, the, the streets called and they wanted me back. So uh, that's where I'm at. <laughs> and I've been back since. What do you plan on retiring as law enforcement? And again, because this is crazy. This this whole interview, this is the first time I've ever talked to a law enforcement officer on this podcast where they don't have to really watch what they say. Now, granted, I'm assuming there's always that chance, but you know, for the most part, you can speak a little bit more freely. Yeah, yeah, of course. But are you gonna your plan right now? Is are you gonna yeah. retire as a cop, or are you trying to take this? Uh, take if if it works out, that's the merch and you know the idea and the movement. If that if that had a chance to work out, would you leave law enforcement? Uh. Possibly, but it would have to grow to the amounts where I would feel like my contribution to society would be better leaving law enforcement to help either people by building morale and doing stuff like that than for me to be out um, policing and doing this. I feel like I, I this whole time has just been having to find a balance uh, between, you know, doing the merch, doing the page and doing my cop work because, um, you know, doing this job, I wanted to do this job since I was five years old. So just getting up and leaving um, is extremely hard, especially for something like making memes and making humor and merch, which I never had a dream of doing. Um, this just happened to happen. And I've been very fortunate that people are buying this stuff and they support it. And then I just reinvested and buy more stuff to sell to them. Um, and that's pretty much what it's been. It's never been about the money with this because, you know, I, I make good money uh, where I work. I don't need the merch money. Um, so it would have to grow to the point where it's it, it's just the merch game has grown so much that I would just have to leave my work because it's just it's unreasonable for me to be at work because I'm making so much money with the other one. That's what would possibly have to happen. 
Yeah. I mean, and I get what you're saying too. the whole, I don't know if, if what you're saying is self-worth, but for me, you know, I know I can, I know if I left law enforcement, I would have to be fulfilling something better than myself in some way. And it yep. sounds silly, but what you said, I'm the same way. If I was boosting some kind of morale for cops, yep. like if I was able to leave and do something and, and I'm not talking like donations and charity, I'm talking like, I feel like I'm, I'm still in it and just in a different capacity. But mm -hmm. if I left the job and went and worked, you know, cause guys talk about leaving all the time and they go sell like insurance for Geico or something and they fucking hate mm -hmm. it because the whole reason why they became a cop was because they wanted to be a part of something better than themselves. And now they're working a regular job and they always come back. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what I want to avoid. Right. Cause you lose seniority, you lose money. Um, and starting over again, I mean, it's just embarrassing, of course, as a man to like leave because you you make a decision to do something and then here you are coming back. Um, and it's a pride thing for sure. Um, and I just don't want to make the, the wrong choice because, you know, there is going to be some backlash that would come from it. Because right now, I feel like the reason why a lot of people support the page compared to maybe some other pages, um, it, the followers are like, you know, super devoted to the pages because I am a street cop. I'm out there with them working and i go through the same shit that we all go through as you know uh day in and day out um so i think that's what they like and i feel like if i lost that dynamic and that angle of no longer being out on the street um some of those followers might diminish um so it's a double-edged sword in that aspect i have to make that decision for myself um but as of as of now i do want to at least do my 20 years of service for yeah. sure and i mean and that's scary too because um, you know, everything's uh, you, when you work for the government, it's kind of lame in a lot of ways, but it's also like when COVID hit, um, I know for a fact, if I was a full-time apparel guy, that would have went under, um, uh, I would have had to have gotten another job just to sustain it. All the businesses closed. And like, as a cop, you're like, am I, like first responders were like the only ones that never missed a beat. Nope. So, nope. You know, it, it, the paycheck's always there. The job security, the retirement, the health insurance is another thing too. Um, you know, and especially if you got a family, you know, I got a, a wife and a kid. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I'm looking to step away, just like yep. you. If it got so big, it would be nice to have to make the decision. I would like that. That's what I call mm -hmm. a bad problem or a good problem to have is like uh, sure, yeah. But and and well, I'm not gonna talk numbers, but you told me a while back what you did for merch, and that was really that was really impressive so yeah so you, you know and i, I don't mind we, we can kind of like discuss it because you know when i first started the first year just kind of selling patches and stickers only um when i went to go do my taxes um i i hadn't really crunched the numbers i just kind of brought the paperwork over and stuff and then when i realized how much how many patches and stickers people bought that first year that i started um where i think i started selling merch probably when I had 3,000 followers, 5,000 followers, I mean, it wasn't much. Um, started selling it, um, and I broke $25,000 in sales um, doing that. It was amazing to me. I couldn't believe that there was that many people buying patches and stickers. Because, look, I'll be honest with you, I don't buy that stuff. I don't. Mm. I don't have a place to put it. I don't. It, it, it's a piece of rubber. That's the way that I see it. It's a piece of rubber. You know, and I don't have a place to, to put it, but people were su like such followers with it. So then I was like, all right, well, I got to stop making T-shirts and stuff like that. And the goal I had set for myself this year um, at the beginning of the year was, hey, I want to hit $50,000 in sales. I want to double what I did last year. And um, we're in July and I'm past that already. Holy um, shit. Yeah. And, wait, and you sell T-shirts too, right? Or is that just stickers and patches? The stickers and patches now, pins, challenge coins now. Um, leggings for uh, the females. I have shorts that are about to drop. The shirts um, that I pre-ordered, they're going to be here in about two days. Um, so I'm going to have well over 150 orders to make the second they get here because people have been waiting way too long. I have are to you, use another. You're pre-selling right now? Pre-selling? What's that? You're pre-selling? I already did, man. Um, there's there's going to be a very limited uh, drop of those uh, whenever they come out. I did order some extras, and I, I I got you with one. I'll send it your way. You know, you sent me that T-shirt after I won the meme war, um, and it I love that T-shirt, by the way. 
love the quality. So me and you are going to have to probably talk on who you use, probably a little more reliable than the person I used to make the t-shirts. They took too long. So. <laughs> Yeah, dude, for sure. I use, um, I go, I, I've heard horror stories about both. There's so when I make shirts, there's the route where you order the shirts, you, uh, mm -hmm. you have them shipped to a print shop or you physically take them there. The printer puts them on there and then you pay the printer and pick them up. And then there's a lot, cause there's a lot of moving parts to that. So when you have a deadline, um, I never, I've never missed one, but I could see where like, like my my t-shirt guy, right? Um, his yeah. his wife had a baby in the middle okay. of my order, and he How was dare like, she? <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. you know, it's it, he was like, "Yeah, hey, it's gonna be a while." And we were, I think we were heading to street cop train. We were heading somewhere, and I was like, "All right, well, I guess we're just not gonna have this shirt," you know. And uh, but then I, the going from a, another way of like ordering the shirts pre-made is that because is that what you do? You just pay a company and they send you the shirts already done. Yeah, pre-made, completely done. I test out, they they have to send me a sample. So be, what I've done with almost every single product that I've had is that I pay for them to make me a sample, um, which typically is a lot of money out of my pocket for them to just do one, all right? Uh, let, let's use an example, kind of like the blanket, all right? I'll give you an example of, a, a, of some merchandise that I made that did not do well. Um, I made a blanket. It was called the hobo blanket, all right? I thought it was just <laughs> extremely funny to just, make something like that the 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 twist to it is that i made it a hundred percent organic cotton okay it had a real leather patch on it um that said the hobo blanket on it with art that i made um like the letters and stuff that i drew on an ipad and i dropped it around christmas time so that people could gift it to each other and i priced it reasonably um and i even had to pay out of pocket a little bit for some of the people that got shipped um, so I was actually like losing money. It's like my gift to them, but it was still too expensive for people. Um, but just to get one blanket made, I had to pay two hundred and twenty five dollars or something to get one made. And then I got 60 of them made after oh, shit. I did not sell many of those blankets. The people that did get blankets loved the blanket. It's like a keen size um you know, little thin blanket that you can throw on your couch and it's great. Um, the, the joke, the running joke with it was like for you and your nomies, you know, you could all fit under the, the, uh, the blanket. Um, but that's what I've kind of done with the t-shirts and the other stuff. I always get a sample order made. I test the stuff out, test the shirt, try to see if it's the right size of the sleeve. I wash it several times over and over and over again, dry it several times. And I just pretty much put it through, through punishment to make sure that people are going to get a good product. Cause the last thing I want someone to call me and say like, Hey, this shit broke. Um, this is trash because you know, people, people don't want to buy shit. That's not quality. And I think that's a lot of issues with a lot of these meme pages is to take the easy route out or even with their logo is they don't want to pay money for the arts. Um, they don't take the time to test who they're buying from and then they end up with inferior products. Yeah. A lot of these people do these things. So what you sound like you're doing is way better than, a lot of people drop shift. They'll mm -hmm. create, they'll create, I think that's what it's called is they'll create, like they'll bring in their design. They create like Shopify and, and it's like, and it's, and you essentially, they just do all the work for you. And like people come to your, come to your website or your page and they're like, Oh, I want that shirt. And they click order. And then an, a third party company, uh, we'll make, make it, make it, package it and ships it. However, that I've heard horror stories about because, um, like, so you get it in and you at least ship it, right? So you can control once you have the product. If someone, yes. if someone orders, you can get it at that order out where these drop shipping companies, they, they send them when they send them. And I'm pretty yeah. sure most of them are in fucking China. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of, uh, that's one of the issues that I kind of ran into. So the only people that I use right now, it's like Printful, is to pretty much make certain shirts that I have or certain stuff. Um, but almost all of my merch um, is pretty much sent by me. 
I'm the one who packages it in. I put it in the little baggie. I send the little goodies. I print out the label and I drive my ass to the fucking post office almost every single day um, to pretty much send this stuff out. Nice. Um, so going back to the meat, how we were kind of talking about it a little bit and uh, yeah. how, what's it like being at work? And again, I'm not trying to make you like, you know, suck a dick or anything, but as a probably one yeah. of, one of the more successful meme pages out there. Uh, and when I mean successful, I don't, I don't mean followers. You have a lot of followers, but yeah. you have value and sure. you have, you know, um, what's it like when someone shows you a meme that you made with a design that you, you know, like that little gnome is part of you now and no one knows. And is it weird? Yeah. It's honestly surreal to, to, to be honest with you. Like I, you know, one of my biggest things, and uh, I made sure that, like, I I looked it up. It's some type of response that people have whenever they hear a certain sound. I think that they did the test with, like, dogs. Um, if you watched any of my videos, the first intro is, like, the gnome, and it beeps. Mm -hmm. It's, like, weird beep. So that's when I realized people were listening to my videos and report writing is because I would hear that beep. Um, and then I was like, what are you guys watching? Of course, I act that's stupid and walk over there and they're watching. They're like, man, this guy's fucking hilarious. You got to follow him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I might. you know, or they'll, I will literally post something. They drive up to me next in the parking lot. They'll like just pull up next to me, car to car. And they're like, bro, have you seen this? And I'm thinking to myself, dude, I just made that like five <laughs> minutes ago. Like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, and I have to just sit here and pretend or they show up with like a hat to work um, in the locker room or like the shirt. They have like the challenge coin. And I just have to completely pretend, bro. Like I've never seen any of these things. So um, it's it's surreal to be honest with you. And it and it feels it's cool. Yeah, um, and you're, I'm, like, uh, yeah. I'm like a I'm like an autistic Batman. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> no one... <laughs> well, you nailed it. You nailed it with the. I, I try to tell other new meme pages. You know, like you gotta brand yourself. If you don't brand yeah. yourself, it no matter how successful you are. It's like selling, it's the same thing as selling somebody something and then them turning around and wanting to buy it and you're gone and they don't know how to get to you again, right? That it's almost pointless to not brand yourself. And like what you said with the sound, like that's, that is like, I remember there was an, there's an episode of The Office where uh, Jim does it to Dwight, where he, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's exactly where I got it from. That's yeah. where I got it from. <laughs> and, uh, but you nailed it. And like, so you start doing that sound with the visual and now everybody just knows when they hear the sound, they see the gnome in their head or if they yeah. see the gnome, they hear the sound. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, man, people send me pictures of random gnomes that they see now across the country or like, Oh, what are you doing here? What are you doing in this office and this hospital and stuff like that? And it's exactly what I wanted. You know, people just are going to see me around and then they're going to go to my page and then they'll eventually end up going um, on my link and possibly buying something. So it ends up just working out on my end. Yeah, and it's I call I was trying to explain to my son like the rule of ten, <laughs> like you'll get out of ten view out of ten views you get one follower out of ten followers you'll get one devoted person and then out of ten devoted persons you'll get someone that's gonna buy whatever service yeah. you're offering you know so and it's just a fucking grind. <laughs> and you know it, man. Um, we, you know, me and the guys have kind of been discussing some of these new pages have kind of like come out the same way that I did, you know, just came out of nowhere and started grinding. And they have definitely taken the easy way out of buying followers um, and, and doing stuff like that. I don't want to call anybody out. They know who the hell they are. Um, they've been here for a whole month and they're, you know, way past 10,000 followers already. Um, and that's just not how it works. I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. And you can see right through that shit. I'm like sitting there like looking and like every time I see something, anytime I see someone's success, I'm dissecting it and figuring out what they did and how they did it. And sometimes, like yeah. you said, you'll dissect it and go, oh, OK, there's nothing here. No, <laughs> nothing here. And, you know, sometimes you can find like a smaller page that has really good content. And you start to see like, hey, the last like 10 memes that they have dropped, they have gotten a lot of likes i can see them getting a lot of followers from this they probably got a lot of shares but when i, I look at your page and in one month you have almost fifteen thousand followers the same that i have and i've been at it for what two years doing the page um and i go to your likes or your views and it's like only two thousand people saw this and you have your likes turned off um yeah 
that's a red flag right there. You're probably buying, you know, you're making memes for people in India. That's for sure. So do they still do that? I mean, cause I know like people will do. be like, people will be like, Oh, I got, I got shut down or flagged and they're giving all these reasons about it. it's because of their meme. And I'm like, no dude, it's because IG has like uh fucking software out there or whatever the hell it is. That's trying to detect people buying this shit and they'll flag you and they'll shut your shit down for 30 days or they'll not allow you to comment for a week because you know, they'll even send you warnings. Stop using this app that we don't Instagram doesn't allow any third party apps. So when you, and I've never bought bots, but I know for a fact that that's the number one way to get your shit, you know, restricted. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I've had a lot of strikes. I can tell you right now that I would probably have a lot more followers if it wasn't for the way that I kind of started the page, the extra dark humor that I would kind of drop and some of the memes, you know, it could be called distaste, distasteful in uh, certain ways. And it just it kept getting me strikes. They were like, you're no longer being shown to people that are non followers or really? you can no longer great and that's happened to me a lot it has happened you're pretty much shadow banned and it's, it's the truth the second that shadow ban is off and they give you like a certain time of when you can uh show branded content it's like you start getting likes and it's not like i've done anything new or special it's not like i all of a sudden got funnier uh it's just more people are now seeing my memes oh so you were legit shadow banned oh yeah me a uh, peach is still shadow banned uh peach cannot catch a break it doesn't matter who he collaborates with uh, and Peach is the one who showed me how to make memes. Um, he's the one that showed me how to make them and stuff like that. He's the reason kind of why I started the page, too, because um, people at work were thinking I was Peach before I even had a meme page. And they were confronting him and sending him messages and saying, like, oh, we know it's you. Damn. Uh, I, I messaged him directly from my personal. I said, hey, man, can you just play along? I said, just funny. I said, just kind of play along. And eventually I sent him some memes. And... <laughs> He got a bunch of likes on them, and he's like, man, you, you got some here. He's like, you should start your own page. And then, of course, the detective thing happened. I was like, yeah, what the fuck do I have to lose? I'm already on patrol. Like, I can't go any lower than this, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, the yeah. um, the one thing that I, I, I haven't done yet, I had a masterpiece made up. Okay. I had a masterpiece video, a reel, and it was my sheriff going on the John Stewart show, which is, I guess, I think like most things are podcasts nowadays. He's got like some show and it, my sheriff went on there because Florida just went to constitutional carry, meaning you don't need a permit anymore. It, it's not open carry and you can't be a felon, but you can carry a gun with no, uh, uh, with no restrictions anymore. So, um, he went on John Stewart, who's kind of a liberal and they were bashing this thing. And my sheriff's like, you know, ask any street cop. They don't want guys out there with guns. And then I sliced me in at street cop training, literally asking a Florida street cop in a street interview. I was yeah. like, what do you think about this? And he's like, oh, I don't care. He's like, anybody that's good is going to tell you they have a gun. And anybody that's bad is always going to have a gun. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, I 100% agree with that, man. Um, You know, when, when they try to turn around and they're like, the cops are going to be the ones that come down, taking your guns and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be against the thing is good people aren't going to just one day get up and just decide that they all of a sudden they are a villain. You know, I'm going to get up and like kill a cop. I'm going to commit crimes. The people who had guns are going to have guns. And that's just then the people who are not supposed to have guns, if they want guns, they're going to get guns no matter what. It doesn't matter what law you put into place. So it just may, I think it makes it a little bit easier for people to be able to protect themselves with that law. So. Yeah, I mean, and, there's no fear of getting arrested if they're, you know, doing the right thing and they want to carry a gun for protection. Well, I don't know about you, but Florida, man, to get a gun. Well, OK, not Florida. There's Florida's weird. And I'm sure Texas is the same way, depending on what part you're in. Like, yeah, uh, it's like is that court system that that circuit system is super liberal. Uh, the state attorney is a Soros funded candidate. That's like open. Everybody knows it. Um, she only goes after cops and, um, she, uh, to get a gun prosecution is borderline impossible. And, and it's, you know, I'm talking like convicted felons, you know, multiple shooting suspects having guns on them and being arrested, you know, they shouldn't have it period and it'll get dropped. So, I mean, those guys are always going to carry anyways. Uh, they yep. know, they know that the laws, you know. They, they joke with us, man. I mean, you you see it too, man, out on the streets when you're arresting people. 
and they laugh in your face. They tell you, I'll be out by the morning. Um, oh, yeah. They, and, and they know it, man. They know that they're going to either get no bond or, hey, the fucking jail's full, whatever it is. And they're just going to they're just going to give you shit like that. They know. I, I mean, there's been times where I take someone to jail, bro. And a couple hours later, they're out on the street again. And I've arrested the same person twice in one night. How long have you been a cop? Uh, I've been a cop for almost seven years now, man. Oh, same here. Going back to like what you were talking about with like arresting the same dudes over and over again. Yeah. And them telling you like, dude, I miss, well, I don't know if I really even experienced it, but the, just the code of honor, like you're in handcuffs, stop crying, like stop talking shit. Or you can talk shit. I don't care. But like nowadays, everybody I fucking arrest spits, kicks, everybody. You used to have the one when I started, you used to have the one every now and again that would just fucking because they were looty tunes anyway. And but now it's like, man, was you, at run, that point. you run Kicking. from me. Yeah, you run from me. I tackle you. We scuffle. Usually no punches are thrown because they know that's the difference between a misdemeanor felony. So as long as they're just trying to get away from you, handcuffs are on. Everybody catches their breath. You're in the back of my car. It's a, it's a game. That's all it is. Sometimes they get away. And, you know, the, and I can't stand it when, you know, they break character, essentially, like they're hard as fuck. And then they're in the backseat crying. They're crying. And a lot of people don't know this, but grown yeah. ass men that are hard as fuck, they cry and they yeah. whine and they beg you and they plead. Don't charge me with that. Don't charge me that. Please. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, the, the thing that I hate, and it's going to be weird that I hate this. I fucking hate snitches, bro. So nothing pisses me off more, even as a cop to, I catch somebody and then all of a sudden they want to snitch on every single one of their homeboys, bro, to fucking get them brought in. Um, it, it, you know, it, at a cop's point of view, love it because now I'm going to get more arrests out of it. But at the same time, like from man to man, like, dude. Be be fucking for real right now. You got caught, and here you are now fucking pulling your homeboys down with you when they were just faster. They were smarter to fucking not be stuck in this situation. Here you are snitching. I fucking hate that, dude. I, I would much rather have a guy cry in my back seat and probably shit himself than for a guy to sit there fucking snitching, bro. I can't yeah. stand On the other side of us, on the other side of us, meaning the criminal uh, people of the world, the the ones I I res I understand how the biggest sign of respect and the most clout you'll ever get is doing time and not snitching. Like in that world, like that is a warrior, that is a warrior world where these motherfuckers go do time and they you know and they come out and they have so much more like, you know, <laughs> you can't a fucking cop is gonna snitch on you immediately. He made the meme. So. Yeah, no, 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 and and that's kind of what happened with me, man. It's just you know they got to fucking push back because everybody just they could have just shut the hell up and not said anything. And as cops, I felt like they should have known better. So whenever it got to me, I was just like, whatever. I'm just gonna admit it and just fucking say it. Uh, there's no reason to lie because as you know, if you lie at this fucking job, you're done. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it sucks because there's always that piece of shit that wants to hand deliver something to someone that's going to get upset about it because you know that's their way of that's their way of moving up in the world like you know i always think about like the movie 300 that little fucking mm -hmm. uh that deformed dude that wants to be a spartan but yep. he can't yep. so he goes and tells the fucking xerxes where they're coming from like i feel like there's motherfuckers out there that take my podcast content and just try to serve it up to the higher ups and see if they can you know be like see i found it yeah, look, look, look at what he's doing, right? Would, <laughs> would you look at talking to people? How dare he? So, what would you? What advice would you give to a uh, a mean page? I 
I want to figure out how to say this because I, I don't want to speak for her, but <laughs> who runs? Yeah. I'll tell you offline who it is. Uh, or you might already know. Uh, pretty successful meme page. The fact that she is a female and she has her attitude that she does, you can see it through her memes. As silly as it sounds, you can start seeing a more artistic, like you can see her brand coming through, even though she doesn't physically have an image or anything. But yeah, yeah. somebody knows where we work and yeah. she's already been written up for it. And we talk sometimes about um whether or not she should just clean slate start over or if she should keep her followers um and just try and make it work because i know you told me offline that there is one person that you trust but yeah that knows everything or i don't know at least one but with her yeah. there's people at that least. know and they already turned her in um you know I don't know how big her following is, but I can tell you right now that if she was successful the first time, um, she can, that flavor that she has, because not everybody's successful, not everybody's funny. They can just pump out memes and stuff, and it sounds like statements sometimes. There's really no humor in it. Um, if she started over, she would be just as successful. Um, yeah. And then nobody would know after that. They have no link to who she is as long as she just keeps it clean you know doesn't tell anybody um so that would probably be my advice to her um but if she's already got called out and nothing came from it then i mean why are you gonna stop yeah she got i guess she got like a, a written counseling um yeah. where we work and that's just yeah you know, but it's add, hey add it to the stack baby that's what i like to say add it to the stack well like so. i talk about all the time man like it, it is a new you know you're not going to be able to get cops that uh don't do memes. Don't uh, you know? Don't post their opinions online. Don't you know? Don't I mean as much as I hate it. Don't TikTok dance like they're all caught. Kids coming through, and I said this before. The kids coming through the academy now have never lived a life without that they can remember. Yes, without a phone, right? So when you get the crusty sergeants in there that are always like, just quit doing it. Mm. <laughs> it's not that easy, you know. Can you tell a meth head to just stop doing meth? It yeah. doesn't work. That and, you know, now our social media policy is so fucking vague. And I'm sure yours is. I'm sure they all. It's just it's a vague thing that says don't make us look bad. And if you do in their eyes, if they conceive you making them look bad and mm -hmm. you have a photo from seven years ago that they can tr scroll all the way down and find that you affiliated yourself. It's, you know, essentially yep. you're just you are when you when people know who you are, you're just, it's a game. And, you know, I'm, I don't, I know there's tons of cop podcasts, but I don't know yeah. of any that I don't know of any. And I'd like to know who they are. If there is any of the ones that, you know, kind of go the a little bit edgier route. <laughs> yeah. I had kind of noticed that they haven't, you know, and then some, some of the ones that do kind of want to go a little bit edgy, they're, they're out of the job already. So they kind of, uh, they do whatever the fuck they want. Um, yeah. So my advice to her is if nothing came from that first one, just keep doing it. I mean, who's going to stop you? You have a gun. I like to make that joke. Sometimes it is just, it's a piece of paper. They gave her a fucking written, you know, warning pretty much. You're going to keep doing it. I mean, we're human just like everyone else. What happens when you give a guy going a hundred miles an hour, a fucking warning, he's going to speed again. <laughs> You know, the, nothing came from it. But if you fucking take his ass to jail for reckless driving, what's going to happen then? I just think they don't have nothing. They're never going to like what a street cop posts, anything. Um, I, you, they, you're you not allowed. They don't on their social media, too. This kills me is that they'll post everything they want and they can use me. Right. Like our social media team can come out and take a photo of me or doing something. And because I'm on a proactive squad, but. It's a grant squad, and part of the thing is we have to go out and do community events because we're called, you know, well, I don't know what they were called, but we have to every like once a month we have to go out and give basketballs away and stuff like that, and uh, and sure. then they leave us alone at night and we get to go do our thing, but um, they'll take photos of me, and blast me all over social media, but you know, God forbid I take a photo of myself in uniform and post it at work. That's using social media at work i think mm. in our we're not allowed to post during 
work hours, which is wow. a policy. Yeah. That is crazy. That is, I, I've never even heard of a policy like that. The, the only thing that my policy says is that you're not allowed to post in uniform. Um, yeah, that's pretty much there. There is no like link even down to the SWAT guys. I think they're not allowed to post in any of their equipment or anything wow. like that. You're not allowed that's... to like go and use your equipment to like go and do training, which is common sense, right? You're not going to be showing people like what we have. Yeah. I mean, I don't know though. I kind of feel like if this job does until you learn to not let it, this job will consume your identity. Um, and you know, it does become kind of like your life where like if you worked at fucking, um, I don't know the fucking, if you worked at target, right. Yeah. You're not going to post about working at target. Cause that's not that fucking cool. When you're a cop, that is pretty cool. And I mean, I get it. I get both sides because I feel like, um, it's such a big part of my life that, you know, I'm also trying to use it to, for gain, you know, so, like as far as like when I say that, like my, my private endeavors would not be anything because I, if I wasn't a cop, it's all because I'm a cop. So I don't know, man, I've watched, I've watched some of your, uh, your other videos and I can say like, I I've enjoyed watching them. Um, you give different topics and stuff. Um, so I think people who are not cops can actually enjoy your stuff. I feel like uh, maybe veterans as well would enjoy watching your stuff. Yeah, it's hard too, man, because cops are the hardest customers for anything. Mm -hmm. they, they either die hard or they don't or they won't spend a fucking penny. Right. They're so, so cheap. <laughs> this, this is something that I've kind of brought up to other people who have kind of asked me on how I was successful with the merch or the page. Um, and mind you, I'm fucking winging all of this as I go. And yeah, I just kind of learn as I go. But what I have learned is that I kind of have a cap as a police officer of where my page is going to go. Because e either cops do not have social media at all. All right. Because they don't fuck with it. There's that. Two, they have social media, but it's under some random name and they're not going to be dare be caught following a page like mine or Three, they have their own personal page. They'll like this stuff, but they're not going to go out of their way and um, start, you know, sharing my stuff on their story for their family to see how they really feel. <laughs> so you're stuck at a select few um, that just kind of don't give a fuck. And that's kind of what I've kind of strived. And, you know, those are the people that I'm making memes for. The, you yeah. know, the people who make fun of us and say we fucking take bribes and shit like that. I'll, I'm going to make a joke about that. I'm going to say, fuck yeah, I'm taking bribes. What now? What are you going to fucking say? <laughs> Instead of getting I'm... mad at it, I'm going to tell you, yeah, I'm taking bribes from your baby mama. And this is what I fucking capitalize on making my jokes is that everything bad that people say about law enforcement, I'm going to make turn it around and make it into a joke. Genius, so, bro. yeah, it, it works. Um because it's funny. We can laugh about it. I mean, we probably laugh about it in briefing, right? They're like, yeah. oh, there's a guy out with a knife. We're like, well, I'm getting my days off. We'll say that shit in briefing before <laughs> we go out to the club. So yeah. I'm going to make him about it because that's the humor that street cops like. That is what they enjoy. You know, it doesn't actually mean I'm going out there and fucking capping this dude just because he's got a fucking knife. No. Would I like to? Possibly. It'd be fucking funny because I just said it in briefing. So... <laughs> It's true though, man, and I, 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 I'm such a fucking constitutionalist. I, I can't get over the fact that like motherfucker cops will have this subculture mindset where we talk, but then the fucking camera turns on and everybody freaks out. Like, I'm not gonna quit talking the way I talk because nope. a camera got activated. Like, or they'll be like, everybody off, everybody off, everybody off. Like, turn it off completely so it can't buffer back. And I'm like, who the fuck cares? Like. I've talked shit about my supervisor and I know they're doing their audits and I can tell yeah. when they heard me say something because my next two shifts will suck because they're mad at me. <laughs> it is what it is, man. I, you know, people will freak out like, dude, you said that on camera. Like oh, this bitch is strapped to me for 12 hours a day. Uh, That's I'm it. Not, you're, I'm... you're along for the ride, right? It's not the other way around. I'm not strapped to the camera. The camera's yeah. fucking. And, I mean, I've seen them try to jam people up. But there's still good supervision out there um, that, you know, like, for instance, like driving in a fucking car and you turn it on and you go, but a back, uh, ours back up a minute with audio. So um, Damn. 
when you click it, it goes back a minute. There's giving guys listening to podcasts, listening to rap music, and the fucking admin will try to jam them up for what's on their camera. They're like, bitch, I'm allowed to li- I'm in my car by myself. There's yeah. a dude, I know a dude that um got cut off, uh said mother he said something like he didn't call the person a name. He's in the car. First off, this cop is in the car by himself. He gets okay. cut off. So there's no one in the no one in the car with him. He says a curse word because it happened. He didn't curse at the person, which I would understand because it's public record. It would look bad. Yeah. He said like fuck or something like that. He gets out of the car, handles the whole thing professionally, uh, writes her a ticket, doesn't yell at her, doesn't do anything, gets back in his car and goes, well, because he said fuck, he got written up in a car. I, you know, I could go for days on that shit, but no, man, I, Hey, I know where you're coming from with it, man. It's, uh, that buffer shit is, is terrible. I have been in pursuits, man, where my music is blasting. And, you know, I don't know if you've noticed just based off of my taste in music. It is, uh, it's definitely a little hood. Um, <laughs> and I'd be writing it for, you know, trying to catch up to a pursuit or I'm in a pursuit and my music is blasting and it makes for good videos later on because, you know, I'm sitting there laughing. We're all laughing at it. But the second it gets to admin, they're like, what the fuck are you listening to? And I'm just waiting for them to hit me with, you know, that's unprofessional and be like, Oh, what's unprofessional about it? Cause I'm going to hit them with that fucking angle. So yeah. And they haven't, they, they've kind of told me to turn my music down because some of the words that are being said and shit, but it, it's not going to happen. I'm blasting. I'm cruising. Yeah. Well, my biggest thing is I say this all the time when I, well, not anymore because there's no, not as many people fuck with me, but I learned to say, why did I break policy? Well, no. Then why am I in here? Why am I sitting here? Why are you talking? Am I being detained? Am I being detained? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, am I breaking policy? Well, no. Then okay. Well, motherfucker, that's your perception of something you might not like. But I didn't break no policy. So unless you change that fucking policy, keep <laughs> bro. <laughs> Tell me you drink tier one blend without telling me you drink tier one blend. <laughs> I guess the, I, the last thing I want to touch on is like your merch, stuff like that, because, you yep. know, if uh, I do and all jokes aside, stuff like your page really does keep morale up. Seeing the MDT uh, computer screens up, that's where people put what they love and what they live or uh, yeah. what they live for. And, you're, you know, seeing that gnome on all these computers, I've been to people's houses. I've seen your gnome everywhere and we don't. I've never talked to this person about your page. So, you know, it definitely keeps people's spirit up, you know, especially when like, and especially t- too with my pot, when people tell me like, Oh, I was listening to your shit at one in the morning made me want to go out there and get some like that. Yeah. Makes me feel a little good, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it, if you haven't heard it, man, the, the, you know, the gnome brings luck, but having a gnome inside of your car, the thing that I've told people, it, it manifests felonies. It's kind of like <laughs> our, 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 it's our white girl crystal. All right. The gnome <laughs> is our white girl crystal. All right. Um, we are manifesting felonies uh, when we bring the gnome out with us. And it, I mean, I have so many stories that people are like, hey, man, I just bought a patch and I put it on my vest. And sure enough, first fucking call I go to fucking felony. And it, it's great to hear, man. I just I'm happy that people are out there enjoying the job because, you know, I've said it since the beginning, since I got hired with this job. If I can provide uh, my community or just, you know, provide the world with 20 years of service and in between that time, I can convince one person to also give 20 years of service and replace me. I have done my job. Yeah. Uh, and that is what would make me happy at the end of the day. If I can convince just one person who would have never done this job or some kid the same way I was convinced when I was five years old, when I saw a California patrolman um, came by and he, he talked to us in kindergarten and convinced me to want to be a cop at that point, then I have done my job and I will be happy. I will happily retire after that. Yeah. It's uh especially just keep keeping people in the job too, man. I'm telling you like our subculture, you know, a lot of, you're talking about the podcast. Like a lot of, I do a lot of stuff for anti cop or not anti cops. Jesus Christ. Um, God, do you <laughs> non cops can enjoy. Um, yeah, but a lot of no, you can't know something until you know it and you can't understand like the mind, like the humor of a street cop, not just the dark humor of a cop, because that's, a, that's another, but a subsect of that, which is what's funny as far as like, you use a perfect example. If you said that shit about 
shooting a guy with a knife and then getting time off. Regular people are going to be like, not what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and you're fuck? like, I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not looking to shoot someone, but we joke about that shit all the time. In fact, but I that's- need time off. You know what I mean? But I need time off. I'm not that- looking to give me time off or I'm going to do something stupid. That's what I like to say in brief. <laughs> so, you know, I, I like to see you getting out there. I would like to see it for you. I know that, you know, you're probably trying to do whatever you do, but like, you know, yeah. if you were able to get out there and like conferences and, you know, it, I, I've told you before, you, your shit would kill there. You'd have people lining up to like meet you and, you know, get, especially if you've invested the money in a dome helmet or a gnome helmet. It's just- no, dude, I actually want to do the whole mascot thing. Like the whole mascot, like a, a gnome, like, you know, uh, like like the whole outfit, I think would be great. And it's you know, I've been looking at them; they're just super expensive. You know, it's a lot of money that I have to drop. But I feel like the enjoyment people would get, and the pictures they would get, the stupidity that we would probably do at that conference, just taking picture and let cops let loose, um, it would be probably worth it to me. So, yeah, um, because I know Police Week is falling down the shitter, as far as I've heard. Um, as far as the um, uh, the consumer side of it, is, I don't know. Have you ever been to Police Week? I have never been to any one of those events, but based off of what I've heard from other people that I talk to and then the stuff that gets sold, like cops now in day and age do not want to buy stuff with the thin blue line stuff. They don't want to wear that. Um, and this is kind of what I based also my merch is that you're able to wear the shirt. And unless you know, uh, like, you know what it is, other people are going to have to question it, especially like the 7-Eleven Robin go that I have, like the art <laughs> that at one point I had on the shirts. People are going to see that shirt and they see a bunch of crazy shit happening. Their first guess is not this is a police related yeah. shirt. They don't think that. And then the whole street got things. People might think you're a gang. You're part of a fight club. They might think you're part of a street like racing club. I mean, th- their first guess is not going to be this guy's a cop. Well, you nailed it, too. I just kind of blew my mind. I, I You know, because I did. My dad owned a merch company back like 20 years ago. And he mm-hmm. that was back in the 90s when you could sell blue line stuff. Now today's of culture, course, yeah. you have to sell a brand. You can't sell the blue line. It's not that I don't think it's cops are any less proud. It's just not cool because in 20 years from now, what's cool is gonna be I have no idea. But if yeah. I was walking and I saw somebody with a blue line shirt on walking around in civilians, I'm gonna be like, fag. Right. But yeah, yeah, that's exactly what's you're gonna think but, almost immediately. But if I see somebody walking with your fucking gnome on their shirt, I'm gonna be like, "Bro, what's up? <laughs> what the, where the fuck did you get that?" Right? <laughs> you know what? Because um, I'm identify. I know that's a cop, and I know he's a cop with a good sense of humor like that. Just branding yourself, like you see a brand, and you're like, "That person's wearing it." That means they probably we could be friends. Yeah, <laughs> and that's kind of what I shop for, man. If I wouldn't wear it, I wouldn't make it. That's kind of what I've come down to. Um, it, People just don't think it's we're not like firefighters who get to wear, you know, the back of their battalion and get and I'm happy for them. I'm happy that they're able to show off that way. You know, it is part of their life. They're there for what, 24, 48 hours, whatever, how long it is that they're there at the station and they want to go to the grocery store in their shirt. They have every right to do so. But we don't get to do that as cops. People fucking hate us. And if I walked around with a shirt that said police in the back, you know, whatever shift in the bottom, like night shift, whatever people are going to like. First of all, they're going to bother you because they're going to ask you some stupid ass questions about something that happened back in 1988 to their fucking second cousin. <laughs> but people that want to do you harm, they're going to say some shit to you. So we we kind of have to uh, play that game. Uh, and you've done well, of course, with your shirts as well. I feel like some of the way your shirts like there's no way for people to know that it's cop related. Yeah, I, I try to do with my company. I try to do a uh, I'm trying to build it a little bit better, like an outsider. uh lifestyle brand rather than because mm-hmm. you know I, i'll a lot of shirts i have veterans won't wear because they're not cops and a lot of shirts i have cops won't wear because they weren't in the military and it's like i got to start making my designs where it's more brand based in a lifestyle rather than you know so live and learn well my advice to you is get yourself a little mascot so I'm a hybrid. <laughs> I don't know if you've even been able to tell by the gnome, kind of the way his his color coordinated. Like they gave him black boots initially when I had them drawn, and I made them change it into brown boots for the contrast because he didn't look the same. He didn't pop as much with the black boots. 
on. Um, he looked a little bit different. So I made him put the brown boots. And if you see the way that he's kind of like positioned, like in the art, it's kind of like Mario, which kind of gives you that nostalgia. Yeah. Yep. It reminds you immediately you look and you think it's Mario. Um, so you, you kind of have to think about that. Think about something that kind of like speaks to you. It has some type of meaning and uh, go from there. But you are going to have to spend some money and some time on doing something uh, good because uh, if you have to rebrand again in the next couple months, if I had to buy a shirt that had something like your art on it and all of a sudden you've switched it back up, it's going to piss me off. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yep. I agree. That's why, you know, sometimes you, you, you start something. Let's say you just, let's say you didn't like street profit. No, that's too fucking late now. Everybody associates with it. Right. So you're kind of stuck with it. But yeah, the last thing I wanted to pick your brain on was All right, uh, go for it. TikTok cops, dancing cops. Lord, I think I already know the answer, but you know, yeah, maybe, maybe 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 you're a closet dancer and just no one knows, and you want to. Oh yeah, you, you want to come out them now? I'm buying my I'm buying my Bud Lights at Target too. <laughs> uh, man, this is the thing. I feel like. I feel like I'm kind of a hypocrite to kind of talk shit about them. You know what I mean? Um, Cause it, I'm not personally using my image, you know, at, in my department in order to uh, make money or like try to bring laughs, but I am using the profession and my experience in it to make memes. Um, they're doing it in a different angle to kind of do it in dancing. But I, I, I think they're, I, I think they're making a fucking clown of themselves doing that. I don't think, a lot of people see the dancing TikTok cop and just think, oh, my God, I fucking love this. This has made my morale go up. Like, I don't know who it's for. It might just be for these random badge bunnies that, like, see them dancing. And that's probably who the video is for. But I know that other cops working in the street don't see that and just go, fuck, man, i got to put some criminals in jail. Like, I fucking <laughs> love that. that well, hey, that's what my fucking job's about, you know? I have never met anybody like that. <laughs> you nailed it um because when you said you don't know who it's for it's for them and yeah. i mean it sounds silly but the things me and you do um we it gets our fucking dick hard when other when it motivates people because i you know i like that i like motivating somebody i do it the t-shirts i make you know they're for people that want to wear the podcast you're just your your page alone you know the motivation that comes for it to keep the job going but I even I don't do it, but I even respect the dudes that go out to shoot basketball with the kids on camera. Like, but yeah. they're, they're yeah. still doing something to shape that kid's vision on cops. Right? There's the fucking cops that go out there and skateboard. I get I I again, you're not gonna catch me on a skateboard or playing basketball, but yeah, I really I can see how the good in that is. Where dancing cops, no one benefits but that fucking cop. That's it. He's yeah. the only one. <laughs> You know, and this is the thing, if they want to use their uniform and their image in order to maybe bring the community together, um, my advice to those people who are out there fucking doing their silly fucking dances and stuff is maybe if you went live on Instagram or something, use your freaking uniform and you invited uh, normal just people, civilians and stuff out that could ask you questions and fix stuff, that would be, I think, a form of community policing that you could do. That would help a lot than just putting some weird fucking video. And then you turn into a meme, dude. That's that's the worst possible thing you can do is just become a freaking meme. Um, I, my design, yeah. I pulled, I still shot at a dancing cop and had it redrawn. So my shirt, <laughs> is there's a poor fucking soul of a cop on that shirt. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, man. So I think there's other ways, but like I said, I feel like if I'm too critical of them, I'm kind of, you know, some people out there are going to be like, well, you're fucking doing kind of like the same thing, you know? Uh, um, but I don't post pictures of myself in my uniform or anything like that. Um, I, But like you said, I guess I guess I'd never thought about it. I guess it is for themselves. I guess it gives them some type of self-worth. It gives them some type of attention, maybe, um, that they're dancing and people give them their likes and that's the way they do it. Um on top of the TikTok dancing cops, I mean, there's the other ones too that make these fucking weird ass skits. Um, I was just about to tell. I was just about to ask you, what do you think about the dudes that like go to the active shooter calls and shit? Or oh yeah, well let me just sit in this fucking car, and all of a sudden they're already on scene, but here they are talking to fucking dispatch. 
Like that's not how it works. No, you know, and they're not I, real cops. Yeah, is, I would like it more if you kind of made like a little movie. Of it. It's not like a skit. You convinced your friends to kind of do it, and you made some skit, and you'd like pretend that you fucking shot someone, and maybe you talk about the tactics of it after, or like kind of the breakdown of what happened. But nah, it's just kind of. They're like, oh my god, hey baby, I love you. There's an active shooter. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you? I don't have time to be calling no bitch <laughs> and letting her know what the fuck I'm doing right now. I'm going hot to a fucking call, fucking bumping young doll. All right, this this is gonna be the last time I might be alive. I'm vibing all the way there. All right, so that's so true. And, and the only good meme that could be made about it, I remember sitting here thinking like I was watching one of those, and like, you know, how funny would it be when you had your radio turned down because you were on the phone and you missed the active shooter call? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go, man. Because you know they're turning their goddamn radio down. Yeah, they yeah, have to get a freaking. Someone's going to freaking call out traffic or some bullshit. And here you are making a damn TikTok. But, uh, all right. So where can, uh, people can go to your Instagram, uh, and then they, the, the you have a link tree. Uh, I don't have a link tree. So that's something that I'm going to have to work on soon. I just haven't got into it. Um, it's just, you click on the link and it goes directly to my website where you're oh, okay. able to. That's, that's even easier. Yeah. And you got, so you got shirts now, right? You almost out or are you completely out? No, no, no. So I have shirts that I sell. So the, the shirts that I'm about to get in are going to be a little more premium. These are the people that they pre-ordered. Okay. So like the logo on the front, that says Street Profit Gnome on the left of the chest is that puff uh, material, that logo. Mm -hmm. It's like that puff. So it's like really nice. And then uh, the back has a really big logo. And then it has like this pink little tag, which kind of has become my thing. It has this pink little tag at the end of it that says Street on it in mm -hmm. cursive. Uh, it's the same like the uh, yeah, I put it pretty much on everything. Um, those shirts I sold, like the ones that said street gods that were like the patrol shirts. I don't know if you ever saw those. They were actual undershirts that you wore. I have to restock those. They were like um, I have some stuff on there that I have to do the ter third party vendor through. Um, but most of my stuff I'm now kind of transferring over to where I get now. I, in the next two days, I'm probably I'm about to get these shirts in. So I'm going to send all the pre-orders out with extra goodies because they waited for so long. And because uh, I think they almost waited like 45 days and my deadline was like 30. Um, so they they waited a long time. After that, I'm going to uh, put the other ones for sale. I want people to get out there and uh, and buy some of your merch, man, and uh, even buy a fucking blanket, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what, man? Like <laughs> I have them. I'm going to keep promoting them um, and putting them out there. It's just, I cannot, I cannot physically drop them any lower. Um, like I said, I'm already losing money on them, but yeah. if you try to go buy an organic uh, blanket that size, it's going to cost you almost $200. So Good I job. think I sold two bucks or something. I have, I've fucking released shit where I was like, yeah, here we go. And it's fucking crickets. And you're like, fuck it. It's yeah, weird. it's like I said, it's weird. And I think the price range for most cops to kind of stick. So like, I think they buy a lot of patches and stickers because, you know, I do free shipping on the patch and everything like that. And on the stickers, um, you, you know, we send them in envelopes and stuff like that. Um, I I feel like the range, if I can stay under $30 most of the time, they're going to go ham on stuff. Yeah. And they're going to have multiple of it. But if something costs more than $30, people are very hesitant to spend that money. And I get it because some police departments don't pay officers enough, you know. Yeah. Um, they all families and stuff like that. They can't be spending it on stuff like that, you know. Um, the hats have been extremely successful. Um, Hat, that hats are hard. My hats are hard to do because people have a hat. And it's not like a shirt where you can buy a shirt and you're like, oh, I'll wear it. Like a hat is yeah. a, someone's like almost like an extension of someone's personality. So if someone buys a hat from you, you did it. <laughs> Dude, they, they buy hats like crazy. Uh, the beanies I ended up having, I think I sold like 400 beanies during the winter. Um, people love them and I made them all murdered out. So you could wear them out on patrol. You know, the street God was in black, so you could wear it out and you know, people will send me pictures of them wearing it. And that's always fun. You ever uh, able to post? pictures of people wearing your merch or yeah man so i post if people send me pictures i always ask them are you okay with me posting and if they tell me yes man i go ahead and i post and that's where i've also been like successful is because they see other people wearing the stuff so it makes you want it as well right yeah uh, it, make, it, it just builds it just builds a uh 
a culture, you know, yeah. like. Some people have already told me they don't like wearing the stuff that says street gods, you know, like, I guess um, it, it's, it's not their, their type of attitude. So they would much rather have the gnome or I say street prophet gnome instead of the street gods. What's good about the street God thing is that um, we don't actually have a page um, like a handle, you know, with the street gods yeah. thing. So if you're caught wearing the street God thing, if you just search street gods, um, it will take you maybe directly to my website, but it's not going to take you to my Instagram or peaches instagram or hoods or bigs like you're not um getting pulled to that so there's like no like link to it it's just like if you know you know you wear the hat and you know like uh people were asking me what the little ticket meant um on the street did you ever see that hat that i had yeah what it's, did that mean the ticket so you know people will come out and they try to say we have the uh we have front row seats to the best show on earth yeah 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 and that, so that was my subliminal without actually having to say it. And it said street gods, like the little ticket. And that's what it was. And, you know, if you had to ask me, I kind of was like, all right, if you don't know, you don't know. Like, that's just how it works. So and I think a lot of people caught on very quickly. They understood what it meant once you look at the hat and you see the little ticket to it. I mean, even the uh, I think the art and the, the way I set up the little photo shoot, it was like a movie theater. So. Well, I hope one day you can do a face reveal. Um, in which case, oh, you know, maybe I will. Maybe uh, you guys will see me. Uh, hopefully, it's not next to Derek Chavonet. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. I appreciate you coming on, man. It was a hell of a time scheduling this with you, but once we locked it in, I'm, you know, it was a really good episode. So I appreciate your time, dude. Hopefully, we can do this again in the future, man. Yeah, so. bro. We'll catch up. All right. All right, bro. Be safe.